Hey everybody, welcome back to Rattle Can Guitar Restorations. I am James. Let's talk about the last two weeks of <clears throat> guitar building using STEM uh, principles. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, guitar building, guitar manufacturing using STEM principles is the name of the course. <clears throat> And the last two weeks were a thrash and bash. So you may remember from the last episode, I had uh, installed the frets on my fretboard and had proceeded to level them, and I was not happy with the results. I had a couple of frets that, I don't know, maybe I manhandled them, maybe I didn't have my, my fretboard completely flat. It uh, doesn't matter. The end result is that there were a couple of them that just were not going to get level, and I finally did get them level, but then I obliterated some frets way down on the noodly end. So uh, we did what you do and took them out. Uh, it was at that point that I had remembered a little tip that I had been taught and that I forgot to do, and that is immediately before you put your frets in to the slots, you take a a file with a v-shape and you put a very very small chamfer on the top of that that kind of breaks the edge uh, on the corners of those and if for some reason you have to pull the frets out it, you're not going to get as much chip out uh, and we did get some and it's some of it's just not resolved and that's you know just what we're going to have to live with uh, so anyways pulled the frets out uh, made a very small fret depth gauge uh, out of just a piece of leftover wire and, and uh, some rosewood. You can make one of those. It doesn't take anything to make those. And um, then we proceeded to refret the guitar. Uh, somewhere in my shop, there is a fret wire bender, which I was not able to locate. Uh, after considerable effort went into trying to do exactly that so uh, I so I made one real quick it's just a piece of, of very old walnut out of a top of like a bedside table I, I've got chunks of old furniture um, sitting around for just such an emergency and this is just a bunch of spare nuts and bolts and some uh, some bearings out of uh, a pair of rollerblades. So anyways, we got it fretted. Um, I made a jig or a fixture. We'll see. I'm taking jig and fixture design next semester. Uh, we'll probably learn the appropriate use of those two terms. Um, but I made a device to hold this uh, to hold my neck uh, so that when we did use the arbor press um, uh, when I went back to school that it would be easier to manipulate. Uh, so uh, I did a little bit more wiring. Let's see. Uh, just to be contrary, I uh, made some pretty stripey patterns um, just to kind of keep my mind occupied uh, while I did this. And so anyways, I got the frets reinstalled. And then uh, we, uh, this, is, this is all done in the house um, after I finished up that class on Saturday. Um, so this is a towel on the kitchen table. And um, we're filing down the sides of the frets. Then we're putting the bevel on the frets. Then uh, we're dressing uh, the frets. I've got a, a three-sided file that I've basically taken the um, and taken the file marks off of there, the teeth off of there, and that's smooth. Um, which leads me, well, I'm not going to talk about it this episode. We'll talk about it in an upcoming episode. I have a new tool uh, that I bought, and uh, I'm eager to kind of test it out, and it falls in line with what we're talking about here. And we'll, like I said, we'll talk about that in a further episode. Um, got my um, tuners installed, installed my uh, string trees. Uh, one of them I got right, one of them I didn't. We, I figured out a better way to do that uh, at class, and um, that will be an upcoming project. 
I guess we'll talk about that uh, when we do it. Um, let's see. What else are we looking at? I'm kind of scrolling over here looking at uh, the stuff that I did. Uh, so then when we went into class, I actually went to Open Lab on Friday and there were three people uh, that came and we worked we worked on guitars um, trying to get kind of ahead of the game because Saturday was our last day at the end of class we had to turn in a functional adjusted instrument and uh, fit and finish was part of uh, what was judged intonation was what was judged um, you know playability do the does the volume go up and down? Does the tone go, you know, fat and thin? Does your switch work? You know, all that, all that kind of stuff. So we were trying to get ahead of the game for that. Um, I did get to experience a set of Japanese uh, nut files, and those might be creeping up on the list because uh, they were pretty slick. Um, super duper sharp and it didn't take very much you know especially if you're you know cutting a net slot for you know tens it takes like three swipes and you're there anyways um, so what I am going to show you now are just a series of photographs of the other guitars that were built in class and uh, I thought this one they're actually all nice in their you know, in their own way. Some of them are nice because of the woods. Some are nice because of the shape that their owners have given them. Um, some of them are are really cool because of headstock designs. There's one guitar that I didn't get and, and that it pains me because um, she had made a guitar and it had like fabric appliques on the top of it. I would think like hodgepodge kind of, I mean, I didn't even really get to talk about it that much, but she had a really cool head shape design and um, she had some cool different embroidery fabric pieces put on the top of it. And I'm like I said, I'm bummed that I didn't get to uh, get that one. Uh, anyways, this is one of the, what we call a stain body because at Sinclair, for the guitarbuilding.org program, we make two kinds of bodies. We make paint bodies and we make stain bodies. And the paint bodies are designed exactly as that. They're designed to have a primer coat applied to them. There's nothing remarkable about the wood whatsoever other than the fact that it is fairly clear of knot holes and such. Uh, it takes paint very well. Um, you know, it's, it's a stable type of a wood. The other kind of bodies that that we make are, are the stain bodies that you know that you're looking at here and that is a series of different woods and that is designed to have like a true oil uh, applied over the top of it or whatever whatever it is you want to do to it and that's kind of a cool angular headstock on there uh, that she came up with this guitar is fantastic looking um, uh, this uh, this is a um, Paduke it is a Paduke body and it is gorgeous and it's, I don't know, 11 pounds maybe. Uh, I mean, with everything on there, it might be 12. It's it's a heavy guitar, uh, but it is a good looking unit. Um, look closely uh, at the volume knob. You'll either get it or you don't. Uh, if you don't get it, send me a message and I'll tell you what it is. Um, so yeah, uh, some interesting, she, and that's a maple, that's the same maple neck that, uh, or is it a maple neck, or did she get a mahogany, it might be a mahogany neck. Uh, I'm just kind of looking at how open the grain on that. Um, so here is a, I believe this is the blade design. We all know what it is. Um, this is the one guitar that got uh, swirl tipped. Uh, that's kind of a cool design. So not only does he have that, you know, that BC rich kind of look on it. It also has a really heavy chamfer on the side of it. Um, yeah, good looking guitar. Uh, this is another one of the stained bodies. This has got a big, beautiful piece of, of uh, Sapele uh, in the middle of it. Um, she was super nice. I mean, everybody in the class was nice to work with. 
Um, I think everybody learned a lot. Everybody was cooperative. Um, uh, it, you know, it, it was a good class. Um, this guitar, super cool. My, my understanding is this lady saw this at some point and decided she wanted to build one. And so she came in, she built it. This is an epoxy, uh, application on here that makes it look like, uh, crash and surf. Uh, on top of that, she got a very nice, uh, flame maple top to go on top of it. So it's kind of a, you're kind of double dipping there. Uh, between the the finish that she was uh, that she had on there and uh, the wood that's on there, this is the lady that kind of won my heart over because uh, she had test pieces. Um, she pulled something out of her bag, and I'm like, "What's that?" And she goes, "Well, this is the first one that I did. That I was testing on." I'm like, "Oh, we are cut of the same cloth." Uh, here's another one of the stain uh, bodies. I thought that was kind of cool. The shape is kind of elongated that I thought was kind of neat. Um, this one is interesting because this is a 25 and a half inch scale uh, length guitar, which is a Fender scale length guitar. But uh, this guy adapted a two piece uh, Gibson, you know, two pneumatic tailpiece to it. Um, you know, with the bridge and the stop bar, uh, kind of interesting. This is a bit, I think the stain on this, uh, guitar turned out super duper nice. Um, <clears throat> the back of it looked, I can't believe I didn't get a picture of the back of it either, but yeah. Um, cool, cool guitar. And then there's this thing. Um, it's, it scored well. Okay. I got an A in the course. I don't. I don't think we get to see the. I don't think we get to see the scoring rubric on it or get a copy of it. Um, but uh, my instructor asked me. He said, "Tell me about your guitar." And in typical suffering artist uh, mode, I proceeded to tell him everything that was wrong with it. Uh, I do have a. So we'll go over that real quick. I do have a string tree that is in the wrong spot. That makes me unhappy. Um, I there are some finish issues mostly from the refret because I just didn't have enough time after I had finished filing off the sides of those frets to um, to get the true oil I just didn't have enough time to get that done before I turned it in so that's something that I've uh, got to take care of I do have a minor neck alignment issue in the fact that my string spacing is not equal that could have been from bridge placement because I was kind of sort of shooting in the dark uh, because the downside of the way that I put the Formica on top of it, a lot of my holes disappeared. And so I was having to kind of do some guesswork and I think I might have guessed a little to one side or the other. So can I fix that by just shimming the neck you know shaving one side of the neck down putting a shim on the other side and just kind of scooching it over it's not off by much it still plays fine um, but that's one of those things that i see it every time i pick the instrument up the other thing i see every time i pick it up that goofy plastic nut i hate plastic nuts uh corian stone brass antler anything that is hard um, I'm just not a fan of the plastic. So anyways, that is the course. Uh, you saw at the very beginning of the episode that it plays. Uh, I am going to, I'm going to take a stab. It's going to take, probably take me a little time to try to get this done. I've got a couple of guys in mind that are, uh, I call them players. You know, they I got I got like six chords. You know, that's that's all I know. So I got a couple of guys in mind that I'd like to have them come over and maybe sit down and actually play the guitar the way it needs to be played. And then in that same uh, in that same episode, um, I think we'll we'll take a, a much closer look at the instrument and what um, I mean the results that you get for signing up and taking a class and paying $200 for a kit. 
<clears throat> now, I have an advantage in the fact that I know the process that goes behind uh, making these and that the tolerances are held pretty tight and that it's they're not made in a you know sweatshop factory by people you know getting paid slave wages you know doing you know piecework and uh, just turning out uh, you know a mediocre product because i know the six guys in the shop that make these cuz i'm one of them now and i know the pride uh, that that they put into these <clears throat> And the high standards that they hold themselves, uh, uh, you know, that they hold that product up to. So uh, we'll look forward to that. And uh, I can also say that uh, the other project that has something to do with this is is progressing along. I'm in the outline mode right now because I want to have all my ducks in a row and. Um, I think it'll be a fun build, uh, and maybe we'll get it uh, started after the first of the year. Uh, who knows? Uh, anyways, I'm James. This is Rock Hand Guitar Restorations. Remember, if you are interested in putting together a kit guitar while also learning and discussing about the scientific principles behind uh, why these operate and why we do the things that we do, go to guitarbuilding.org and there is a map that you can see where the closest location is uh, in your area. Um, it's, it's mainly targeted towards middle school and high school students. Uh, there are some community colleges or some four-year colleges that, that will teach this course. Um, there are, my understanding, some veterans veterans groups maybe I don't know I've got to look through that list and, and kind of kind of get a better lay of the land on on where you can actually take this course if you're in Dayton or if you're <clears throat> if you're close to Dayton I mean if you live in Indy you can drive over on a Saturday uh, and take this course um, my understanding is there are maybe two slots open starting in uh, is it starting January maybe I don't know. Anyways, that's what's going on. If you got questions, if you got comments, uh, let me know. Um, I will also be in that following video. Um, we'll be talking more about um, the pieces and the parts that kind of go into this stuff, and where uh, you could possibly have uh, you know room for improvement. So, anyways, um, it was fun. I got college credit. For, I built a guitar for college credit. How crazy is that? And, you know, I get to keep the thing when I'm done. And there it is. With a beautiful, beautiful piece of maple on that neck. You know, not too... Sh not too shabby. Anyways, I'm James, and hey, if you got an idea for a name, maybe you should put it down the sermon notes, because it doesn't have a name yet. I still don't think it has a name yet. Anyways, you guys have a good one. Cheers. Hey, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us this afternoon here at Rattle Cane Guitar Restorations. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to click my beautiful face above hit the bell to be notified next time we drop a video here's a video uh, that the hive mind has picked out especially for you and remember if I can do it you can do it you guys have a great weekend shut up cat cheers <laughs>